Our next speaker uh, is Dr. Michael Eady from Mount Sinai in New York City, who's going to be speaking to you about uh, the language uh, that we speak. Dr. Shaw spoke a little earlier about uh, how we might communicate with each other, but as you all know, the language is changing. Uh, he's going to speak a little bit about ICD-10. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, if, we, if we could have the, the uh, PowerPoint presentation first. I've got a, a high-risk multimedia presentation here to try to keep you awake. Good. But it would be good if we could have the PowerPoint presentation. Please, Surfer Bob. <laughs> So uh, I'm going to just talk to you in very preliminary terms about uh, the transition to ICD-10, which, as you know, I could just stop here and say, well, it's been deferred. We don't know for how long. Um, okay. Mouse. Next. Right. I have no disclosures. Um, firstly, today what I'm going to talk about, just briefly, is mention what the HIPAA 5010 standard is, talk to you a little bit about the historical aspects of ICD coding, the structure of the new code set, and the differences between 9 and 10, show you a little bit of software that we've developed to do some translation, talk about the transition, who makes it, uh, and when. Firstly, uh, HIPAA 5010 is, is with us already. And this is a, uh, something that transitioned on the 1st of January. It's a language that allows our billers to talk to the insurance companies in a form which is now more ICD-10 compatible. Um, it's a standard for health-related billing, for processing transactions. It's absolutely key to what we earn and uh, it provides better compatibility with ICD-10 when that eventually becomes uh, transition. Um, it shouldn't have affected receipts, but it did. And uh, as a cautionary tale, I learned from our practice administrator a week or so back that uh, when he became aware of it in the first or second week of February, there had been virtually no receipts in January for the Department of Surgery at Mount Sinai. This is a four and a half million dollar budget item with about 35 percent receipts and the monies that came in were all point of sale uh, credit cards and cash payments. Um, this was a direct result of the transition to ICD-10. It's a complete fiasco. Uh, <clears throat> what happened was that the packets of data which were sent from the billing office to the um, uh, uh, clearing house were fine, and that process tested well, but from the clearing house to the, to the payers, there was a, a, a mismatch between things as basic as uh, biller address and pay to address, so that with the default setting for the insurers being not pay versus pay or not pay, they didn't pay. And this has happened all around the country. Now, this is, it's going to be sorted out, but you can imagine that um, by introducing a, a highly complex set of changes such as ICD-10, then there's great potential for uh, financial catastrophe. Just a little bit of a history. The ICD code, the International uh, Code of Diseases, it used to be a coding of death, causes of death that changed to diseases sometime around about version 5 or 6 in the 1940s. Uh, so about every decade there has been a, 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 a revision. And uh, the most recent uh, code set, ICD-9, was created back in 1979. ICD-10 uh, was created a year after I started here in the United States. So in 1994, that's how old ICD-10 is. It's used by every other developed country in the world other than the United States. <coughs> the United States is the only country in the world that uses ICD-10 ICD coding, ICD coding for billing purposes. The rest of the world uses it for uh, classification of diseases and epidemiology studies. This is the sort of thing that the uh, consultants who get hired by your organizations 
will present. And this um, arrow, I, I, I saw a version of it when Paresh was up here, uh, describing meaningful use. I think all the consultants are going to the same set of, um, of graphics in the web. Uh, <laughs> they're talking about stages of grief and loss in the transition from um, RCD 9 to 10. Uh, it's going to be a slow process, but you have to start doing it now. Uh, it's the engine room. ICD coding is the engine room of our re reimbursements. Although uh, it's not officially now October 1st, uh, 2013, it's sometime in the future, let's assume that it's still going to be October 2013 because otherwise we simply won't be prepared. It's a complex process. Now the stakeholders are us, coders, they're the people that work and code our records. And coders are, are not just our, our, our billing, it's the hospital billing as well, and that's a far more complex process than, than what we're involved with. The finance department, compliance, and IT. And IT has a very big component here, uh, and I'll talk about that briefly as we go on. Don't be afraid of it, at least from our individual component uh, work as a surgeon. It's relatively modest, but key, clearly, because we're the ones who will make the decisions about what the most appropriate code for a particular diagnosis for your CPT code for the procedure you do is going to be. Uh, the unfortunate reality, of course, is that this is going to cause confusion. It's inevitable. Uh, just look at the uh, difficulty of in in instituting the um, physician identity number uh, into the United States nationally just a few years ago and, and how many headaches that caused in billing on the uh, CMS 1500 form. Just getting that single file, that single um, field, I should I say, on the CMS 1500 form was an extremely difficult process. And insurers are going to use this inevitably to deny, deny claims and delay payment. Now, ICD-10 is, is a, a relative old Coming now, ICD-11 is in existence, it's in use in a lot of developed countries. Australia is already talking about ICD-11, and uh, the final draft of that is going to be in 2014. It's very unlikely that it will be in use before uh, 2020 in this country, uh, so we've got nearly a decade to go, so you can breathe easy about that. ICD-10 is an important stepping stone to ICD-11. So people say, why not just walk straight to 11 if it's so developed and important? But uh, the transition from 9 to 10 is so fundamental that it's, it's one that we can't really miss. So what's the difference? Firstly, there are a hell of a lot more codes involved. Uh, the 16,000 diagnosis codes that exist in ICD-9 now become in the order of 65 to 70,000. The 4,000 procedure codes have been split off into a separate file that only exists for the United States. I'll mention this briefly uh, uh, shortly. And there are about 88,000 of those, and I'll, I'll explain to you why there are 88,000 of them. The codes are structured differently, they're written differently, um, and there are files that you can get easily if you want to do the translation yourself. You just got to get onto the uh, cms.gov and type in ICD-10 and you'll be immediately presented with uh, menu links that take you to the um, file translation uh, uh, applications. Forward mapping is, this, is the process of translating a, a 9 code to a 10 code and backward mapping is obviously the reverse. Uh, so what I thought I'd do is just take you on a little tour of a few codes. Uh, unfortunately the, uh, the print is small um, so if you've got your opera, gla opera glasses and you're sitting at the back, you may want to uh, move forward if you, if you uh, can't focus. But let's look at uh, diseases of the, of the uh, let me see, where we can we go? We'll go to neoplasms, all right? And uh, here we are, this is a, a data repository. You can get onto links which uh, link directly to the um, CDC. Uh, this is a commercial uh, data thing and we can see malig malignant uh, neoplasms of the digestive system, uh, digestive organs here, uh, esophagus for example is C15. Uh, all of the new codes start with a letter. Uh, the only ones that did um, 
in ICD-9 with the old V codes and some of the E codes, the ones that we would mostly see were the, were the V codes. And the rest started with a number. In uh, ICD-10, they all start with a letter. The letter is not particularly evocative except for cancer, and that's C. Um, and uh, malignant neoplasms, uh, if you're looking for breast cancer, for example, you would need to go to um, malignant neoplasms of the uh, genito urogenital system, I think it is, down here. It's a bit small for me to see. It's C50. Um, I won't click on it, but you, you, you can play with this yourself. Uh, you can do this electronically or by a book. Um, so let's go back to the uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation. Thank you. So here's nervous system, ear, circulatory system. So the vascular surgeons are, go are going to want to go to the circulatory system. Obviously, as general surgeons, we're going to be mostly dealing with the digestive system. Genitourinary is uh, where you'll find benign diseases of the breast. Um, so these are very easy to do. If you've got a computer in front of you, you can log on and do all of this real time. Let's look at hernia. Now, what you'll find is that there's mostly, for the sort of diagnosis that we do, mostly a one-to-one -one correspondence. Inguinal hernia here, uh, you'll see there are a number of different specifications, bilateral, uh, with or without obstruction or gangrene, that very similar to the previous coding example. Let's go back to PowerPoint, please. Um, and that mostly applies for a lot of our codes. I haven't free-ranged around to look at the vascular codes, which are likely to be more complicated because there will be codes for laterality and uh, gender as well. Can we go back to PowerPoint, please. Like I said, this is a high risk. <laughs> PowerPoint. Can bring up his slides again, please. The bottom there, Mike. The, I, I, I dare not click. What's that? I dare not click. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it's like when you and your kids are yeah. control yeah, yeah. different mouses. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's hidden there behind somewhere. Um, let me just talk a little bit about the. Uh, Next. Okay. Now, there's a thing called the comparability ratio. Uh, there is a not necessarily a one to one mapping correspondence between ICD 9 to 10. Um, overall, number of codes went from 16,000 to 66,000. You can do the math, but that's about a fourfold increase. Most of the general surgical codes, as I mentioned, there's a one to one map. Uh, here, these are the top three causes of death uh, in the United States, or actually in, in internationally. And here you can see the, um, the top three causes of death with their ICD-10 codes, their corresponding ICD-9 codes. And there, here there's a pretty tight correspondence. But in other diagnoses, uh, other diagnoses um, we can expect that uh, the incidence, the prevalence of diseases will change as the coding system changes because of the correspondence anomalies. And certain diseases will increase in prevalence about 30%. This is clearly not a disease-related phenomenon. It's just a coding-related problem. But it's one of the phenomena that you have to accept when you change the coding systems. I'm not going to deal with that in any more detail. You can see that the, the breast cancer diagnoses are much the same, perhaps a little more precise in the ICD-10 code. But when you go to um, uh, disorders such as Crohn's disease, you've only got about four codes for Crohn's disease in the 10 system, but then you know, around about 20 or more in the, uh, and far more specific. So this is what we clearly call a more granular <coughs> system. Um, I thought I'd just show you, uh, we need to transfer over to the log me in file now. This is, you're gonna have trouble um, 
seeing this, but it is a piece of software that I created with, with a database using downloaded material. Could we switch to the uh, uh, log me in file, please? Okay, so here we are over here. Um, this is just a, a, a database that I created, and unfortunately you can't read it very well, but I, uh, it's got the 66,000 diagnoses in it. Down here I've typed in um, a word, stone. And uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to create a, a very generic search tool so that if you could remember just a single word or, or, or series of letters in your diagnosis code and translate it from 9 into 10, so stone is here, and uh, so we're going to do a little search and find what we find with stone. Oops, no, that's what we have to do here. And the list has already been built. So let's go back and uh, do it again. So this gives you the list of um, all the diagnoses that have the word stone in it. And there's um, a whole bunch of things to do with... Uh, uh, a retinal problem that has the word stone in it, but the only word that has stone in it in general surgery is gallstone ileus. And there's a one-to-one -one correspondence for gallstone ileus, ileus, and I, I can't read the letters and you probably can't either, but something like K45, something of that order. Um, <clears throat> if we go to uh, the word cholecystectomy, if we just paste into this uh, Cholecyst. Okay, and we do a search on that. This will give you all the all the codes, and there's a little bug in my software here, so I have to do it again. And uh, it'll list all the, <laughs> the second time. All right, there's a nearly a one one to one correspondence. Um, and you'll see, oh, it's interesting. It didn't do this before. It multiply tested it, but. Um, there's a nearly one-to-one -one correspondence with the various uh, string searches on the word cholecystectomy. Let me not go into that in any more detail. Uh, I'll just go to uh, how this is, is useful to you in your practice. This is a patient I operated on last week. The operative report I'm going to bring up for you. It's been de-identified. But I've now added fields for the ICD-10 code and the descriptor here. And when it comes up on the, um, on the operative report, you'll see that it, uh, it, it's included. And I'm, I'm doing this uh, at the moment. And um, this is the operative report. And you can see over here are the ICD-10 codes. And eventually, it'll be a simple matter for me to change that out and uh, leave the ICD-9s off completely. Could we go back to the PowerPoint uh, presentation, please? I just wanted to mention briefly the um, the uh, ICD-10 procedure-specific codes. So, yes, it did seem to work, so we can pass on to the next slide. What are the procedure code system? Like I said, this is a code system that has been created just for the United States. Um, it is terminally complicated. Uh, as you can see here, there are all sorts of operations that it allows for such as uh, that very common operation that you and I do, which is reattachment of the gallbladder by a percutaneous <laughs> approach. Um, and uh, here's another one. Um, there are 32 gallbladder bypass codes. You can attach the gallbladder to the stomach, every name, biliary duct, and the small intestine. And uh, there's even one here for attaching the stomach to the cystic duct by an open approach. Um, these are not operations that I'm very, very familiar with, but uh, uh, the code for it is here. It's, it's a very arcane sort of system. This is what the people in the engine room down in the basement of the building who are doing the coding from your operative report are going to have to create. And so uh, give them a bit of slack. They're all going to have to go to courses. The courses are going to take uh, uh, days to weeks for them to complete. So, just in summary, uh, the immediate application of the HIPAA 5010 uh, change has, has been an immediate disaster, but uh, one that eventually will be corrected. It's been deferred, the implementation of ICD-10 has been deferred. 
Uh, I don't want to say indefinitely, it may be six months, it may be a year, we don't know as yet. Uh, there are very real risks to your financial integrity and future uh, if you don't become familiar with this system. Although there may be a simple one-to-one -one correspondence for many of the surgical codes, for others there are lots of choices. And have some form of uh, uh, super bill or electronic system which will allow you to look at these and choose the most appropriate selection. And then it's important that between the billing office, the um, uh, communication between the billing office and the, um, what do we call it, the... Um, in between, I'm blocking on the word. You know, thank you very much. So, Any questions? So <laughs> start planning for the tr transition and uh, run two systems in parallel. And I, I think you, I'm, I'm planning to do it now and I, I, we'd like to have the whole Department of Surgery doing it by January 2013. Thanks for your attention. Thanks. Any questions for Dr. Eady? We've covered it all. Thanks. <laughs>